Daniel chapter 7 is a powerful and haunting vision that has captivated readers for centuries. This chapter is apocalyptic in nature, filled with vivid imagery and symbolism that speaks to the ultimate triumph of good over evil. The visions in this chapter were revealed to the prophet Daniel in a dream, and they provide a glimpse into the future and the ultimate fulfillment of God's plan for humanity. Welcome to our YouTube channel, where we explore the teachings, stories, and wisdom found within the pages of the Word of God. Whether you are a long-time believer or just beginning to explore your faith, our channel is here to provide you with insightful and inspiring content that will deepen your understanding of the Bible and its significance in your life. Join us on this spiritual journey as we delve into the scriptures and seek to grow in our faith together. Subscribe now to stay connected and be part of our growing community of believers. The chapter opens with Daniel seeing four great beasts emerge from the sea, each representing a powerful kingdom. The first beast is like a lion with eagle's wings, the second like a bear, the third like a leopard with four wings and four heads, and the fourth is a terrifying and powerful beast with ten horns. These beasts symbolize the rise and fall of earthly kingdoms and empires throughout history. They are powerful and oppressive, seeking to dominate and control the world. The first beast is a lion with eagle's wings. The first was like a lion and had eagle's wings. Then, as I looked, its wings were plucked off, and it was lifted up from the ground, and made to stand on two feet like a man, and the mind of a man was given to it. Daniel 7-4 Many commentators view the lion as an appropriate symbol for Babylon. Nebuchadnezzar himself is referred to by the prophet Jeremiah as a lion from the thickets of the Jordan, Jeremiah 49-19. Over 120 lions, fashioned out of colourful, glazed ceramic brick, decorated the processional way of the ancient capital city of Babylon. The processional way was a walled road leading out of the city through the Ishtar Gate. Ishtar, a Mesopotamian goddess worshipped both by the Assyrians and the Babylonians, was represented by a lion. The winged lion then would correspond to the head of gold in Daniel 2. The comment, and a man's heart was given to it, is often understood as referring to the humbling of King Nebuchadnezzar as recounted in Daniel 4. The next kingdom to emerge is portrayed through the symbolism of a lopsided bear. And behold, another beast, a second one, like a bear. It was raised up on one side. It had three ribs in its mouth between its teeth, and it was told, Arise, devour much flesh. Daniel 7.5 The lopsided bear represents the Medo persian Empire, of which the Persian portion was much stronger than the Median portion. Of the three ribs in the bear's mouth, commentators, both ancient and modern, see in this symbolism the three provinces of Media, Persia, and Babylon. As Jerome in the late 4th century states, therefore, the three rows in the mouth of the Persian kingdom of the Babylonians, the Medes, and the Persians, all of which were reduced to a single realm. The third beast to emerge is a four-headed leopard. After this I looked, and behold, another, like a leopard, with four wings of a bird on its back, and the beast had four heads, and dominion was given to it. Daniel 7 6. Life come to an end in 323 BC. After his death, Alexander's vast empire was divided up by Alexander's generals, friends, and family members. What ensued were roughly 50 years of wars between these various successors known the Diadochi. By the 3rd century, Alexander's kingdom was largely controlled by four dynasties. These four divisions were the Ptolemaic dynasty ruling over Egypt, 
the Seleucid dynasty, ruling over the region extending from modern-day Turkey to Afghanistan and Pakistan. The Lysimachean dynasty, ruling over the modern region of Bulgaria. The Cassandrian dynasty, ruling over the region of Macedonia or modern-day Greece. This fourth beast correlates to the fourth kingdom of Daniel II. While the beast here has iron teeth, the fourth kingdom of Daniel II is represented by the legs of iron. In Daniel II, the emphasis was on the crushing power of the fourth kingdom. Here also, the fourth kingdom is repeatedly emphasized as a kingdom that would crush, devour, and trample the peoples and kingdoms that it conquered. After this, I saw in the night visions, and behold, a fourth beast terrifying and dreadful, and exceedingly strong. It had great iron teeth. It devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped what was left with its feet. Daniel 7.7 .7. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces, and stamped what was left with its feet. Daniel 7.19 While the overwhelming majority of interpreters throughout church history have believed this fourth beast to represent the Roman Empire, the Roman Empire in many ways was anything other than a destructive empire. Instead, it was rather constructive, often adding infrastructure, order, and law to the lands it conquered. Alternately, the empire of Islam, wherever it has spread, has most often been a destructive force to the peoples and cultures it conquers. Today, in the ancient heartland of the early Christian church, the small Christian communities often struggle, with many fighting for the very survival, while the cities of Antioch, Alexandria, and Jerusalem were once the thriving capitals and strongholds of the church, today the indigenous Christian communities, there are a shadow of what they once were. Alternately, in the capital city of Rome, the entire city has been Christianized, while the Islamic Caliphate has beaten down the Christian church and the people of God, it was the Christian church that ultimately prevailed over and conquered the Roman Empire. The descriptions of the Fourth Kingdom fail to match up to the Roman Empire, but perfectly align with the description of the Islamic Caliphate. The Ten Horns represent a revival of the Fourth Kingdom. Out of the beast grow ten horns. These ten horns represent the revived. Islamic Caliphate and correlate to the feet of iron and clay in Daniel 2. Many commentators also see the ten horns as specifically correlating to the ten toes on the statue. It devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. It was different from all the beasts that were before it, and it had ten horns. Daniel 7.7 7, we are told that the ten horns represent ten kings or kingdoms that will compose the coming Antichrist empire. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom... Ten kings shall arise. Daniel 7.24 Then from among the ten horns, Daniel sees another horn emerge. This eleventh horn seems to uproot three other horns and then takes complete charge over all ten. I considered the horns, and behold, there came up among them another horn, a little one, before which three of the first horns were plucked up by the roots. And behold, in this horn were eyes like the eyes of a man, and a mouth speaking great things. Daniel 7, 8 This introduction of the little horn is where this vision extends beyond the information revealed in Nebuchadnezzar's dream. Whereas Daniel 2 revealed the coming four empires, this portion of Daniel's revelation introduces us to the leader of the final kingdom. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which were, was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. 
and about the ten horns that were on its head, and the other horn that came up, and before which three of them fell, the horn that had eyes, and a mouth that spoke great things, and that seemed greater than its companions. As I looked, this horn made war with the saints, and prevailed over them, until the Ancient of Days came, and judgment was given for the saints of the Most High. And the time came when the saints possessed the kingdom. Daniel 7, 19, 22. The little horn is seen to speak pompous words and persecute the people of God. Christians popularly call this individual the Antichrist. As has been consistent throughout the chapter, the information is reiterated. As for the ten horns, out of this kingdom ten kings shall arise, and another shall arise after them. He shall be different from the former ones, and shall put down three kings. He shall speak words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and shall think to change the times and the law, and they shall be given into his hand, for a time, times, and half a time. But the court shall sit in judgment, and his dominion shall be taken away, to be consumed and destroyed to the end. Daniel 24-26 The actions of the Antichrist that are the most emphasized are his pompous and blasphemous words against the Most High, as well as his persecution of the people of God. Then I desired to know the truth about the fourth beast, which was different from all the rest, exceedingly terrifying, with its teeth of iron and claws of bronze, and which devoured and broke in pieces and stamped what was left with its feet. Daniel 7.19 After watching and pondering the destructive power of the Antichrist and his kingdom, Daniel describes his own condition as greatly troubled. Here is the end of the matter. As for me, Daniel, my thoughts greatly alarmed me, and my color changed, but I kept the matter in my heart. Daniel 7.28 but then, in the midst of these terrifying visions, Daniel sees a new figure, a son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. This figure is given dominion and authority over all peoples, nations, and languages, and his kingdom is eternal and never-ending. This son of man represents the ultimate victory of God's kingdom over the kingdoms of this world. He will reign with justice and righteousness, putting an end to all evil, and establishing a kingdom of peace and love. The chapter concludes with the interpretation of the visions, revealing the meaning behind the beasts and the Son of Man. The four beasts represent four powerful kingdoms that will rise and fall throughout history, each seeking to exert its power and control over the world. The ten horns on the fourth beast represent ten kings who will arise and bring great turmoil and destruction. But ultimately, the Son of Man will come and establish a kingdom that will never be destroyed, a kingdom that will reign forever. Daniel chapter 7 is a powerful reminder that God is in control of human history. Despite the rise and fall of empires, the turmoil and suffering of this world, God's kingdom will ultimately prevail. The visions in this chapter serve as a warning to those who seek power and control, reminding them that their kingdoms are temporary and fleeting. Ultimately, it is God's kingdom that will endure, bringing justice and peace to all peoples. As we reflect on Daniel chapter 7, let us be reminded of the ultimate triumph of good over evil. Let us take comfort in the fact that God's kingdom is eternal and unshakable and that one day all evil will be vanquished and all will be made right. Let us hold fast to the hope and promise of a kingdom where justice reigns, where peace is everlasting, and where God's love shines brightly for all eternity.